GPI boxes is uh, one of those bricks and mortar solutions you'll find in the Skahoy product range. It's basically inputs, up to isolated inputs, and relay outputs that you can connect to the real world with uh, small cables that you short with a, a switch or you uh, connect the um, output to a lamp, basically, which is a, a piece of electronic you just make yourself. So they are very useful to interface with legacy systems, your own creations, and so forth. And the brilliant thing about the GPI solutions in the Skaho universe is that it's hooked up with the Unisketch core of our solutions. So you can thereby connect inputs and outputs to your camera or your video switch, your video router and so forth. Sometimes you want to do something slightly different. You want to connect it to a button really. So all you want in that case is to have a button press one place in your facility, uh, turn on a relay in another place of your facility. And you might want to also feedback from an input uh, back to the panel, so let's say a button lights up when an input is shorted. So this is what we'll look at in this video, how a Crosspoint 24 controller from Skahoy could be hooked up so a button press would flip a relay, and on the other side a GPI trigger from the Ethernet GPI link box, the, the product we'll be looking at, can um, light up a tally bar on the Crosspoint 24. So I brought a Ethernet GPI link, a single version here, it has eight inputs and eight outputs, we have the Crosspoint 24, so 24 buttons, right? And also some very nice tally LEDs, which could be super useful in this case. I, um, I can quickly demonstrate what it does functionally, and then we'll look at configuration so you understand how these are talking together. If I press this button, you see that um, I turned on a relay over here. That little printed circuit board is my test board. It's um, basically there to, to allow me to check that this box is working. And when that LED lights up, it means that a relay inside the box has been closed and the LED is lighting up. That's really uh, Electronics 101. And I'm now doing the same for another four LEDs. So now four LED, uh, relays are flipped inside and I can turn them on ag off again, as you can see. On the other hand, I've also made it so when my I press this uh, GPI point, you see I have um, the button here lighting up. I also have the LED bar lighting up. And obviously for the other ones, you can see the same happening. Okay, so we have forth and back communication. These two boxes are connected to each other over Ethernet. So let me see. Uh, I always forgot which one is server and which is client. Well, this one is the server, so it has a GPI, uh, sorry, a TCP server built in. This is an Ethernet client. So when this one boots up, it's trying to connect to the IP address of the panel. Um, and in and basically the way this works is that this box has been instructed to listen to a number of registers, binary registers over here. So the cross point 24 has something called flags. And I have used the first 16 flags on the server, the cross point 24. And flag number one is associated with this button up here and also the, the LED bar down here. And I, I do that for the first eight. And then from here on, I have flags nine all the way up to 16, okay? So when I press this button, I am uh, flipping that flag from false to true, and the GPI box over here is listening to the state of that flag on the server over here and will turn on the relay in response to that flag. So let me show you how that is configured on these controllers. I have a web browser with a configuration for the Crosspoint 24 and also configuration of the Ethernet GPI link. And you can see the device core installed for the Ethernet GPI link is maybe a little bit surprising. The raw panel um, device core, the, the raw panel device core is usually, and w when you see me talk about it, it's all about sending triggers over to your, your custom built software, hardware system, uh, or your, um, some application that uses the, the raw panel protocol to receive triggers from Skahoy panels and send back display contents and everything else. But raw panel has actually additional features that will work in this context, um, which we'll see if we uh, select the uh, output here, you can see I'm choosing an unusual action for the raw panel, which is called flag. And flag basically means that we are now working with external registers on the Crosspoint 24. And 
if we look at the first um, four outputs, that would be the first four relays, which I was now shorting over here. You see that they are all listening to, um, or they are, yeah, they are all listening to flex from the Crosspoint 24 using the Unisketch raw panel flag command. It looks very much like the system flag, but not to be confused because we are now looking at the flags over here. So you see flag number nine, flag number 10, flag number 11, and 12 are all used for feedback. Feedback means the value that de determines if the relay that this action is associated with will get closed or not. So that's the listening part. Now it would be interesting to see on the Crosspoint 24. So let's go over there. You can see it has a device call called TCP server. So the server and the client goes together and the TCP server is ready to accept connections from the raw panel uh, client. If I let you see the configuration of these four buttons, you see that it is changing the system flag over here. It is changing flag number nine, number 10, 11, and 12. And that is exactly what this box here is listening to. So there you go. Now let's look at the GPI side because when we uh, press the first GPI trigger, you see this button change. And if we look at the configuration for this button, you see that this is, uh, as I pr uh, wait, it has feedback flag number one. Let me bring them up. You see, actually the button itself is apparently setting flag zero. We are not using flag zero for anything but it is listening to feedback flag number one, meaning that it will paint itself highlighted or dimmed based on whether flag number one is set or not, flag number one, two, three, and four. And that is, if we go back to the GPI box, let look, uh, let's look at the inputs here. You can see for those first four inputs, I am setting flag number one, two, three, and four over on the cross point 24. So it all makes sense. And if I go back to the cross point 24, I don't know if you noticed, but actually the LED bar just beneath the button uh, picks up the same color. So when I press the GPI point here, you can see this LED bar also highlights itself, all right? Um, that might be worth noticing. You may ask, how did I do that? I could have done it by simply assigning the exact same action, but um, we have done something kind of more clever. So this is a side issue, but you see that the meter below the button is tying itself to the function of the button. The button has ID number 13, and in this case, I am simply tying the meter to component number 13. So it's, it's um, tagging itself onto the function of, of that button, and this is how we did all these meters. So what, wh whenever I change the button function, that meter is gonna follow along. That was, uh, let's say that you uh, you want to do this operationally. I, I want to finish up showing that we'll change this configuration. And what I want to change here is when I press the first button, the, the, the problem really is if I disconnect these two, you can see I'm still flipping this over here. So I don't have any feedback on the button color whether or not the relay is really flipped over here. What if I want that feedback to flow Re back from the GPI box. So this one will truly flip a relay, but I'm only gonna light it up if I receive instructions back from the box that I should light it up. That would, um, let's say the relay starts recording or streaming and you want to use the GPI trigger to confirm that this actually happened. So uh, let's just connect it again. What I simply need to do is to um, change what this button is listening to, okay? Uh, so let's see if they have, um, this is booting up now. So we're just, yep, there we, we see now they're connected again and this is all good. Now, um, let's, let me, let me show you how we do this. We need this box over here to change its configuration a little bit. So I'm just gonna attach the USB cable using the Skahoy firmware updater. I'll go into local configuration that means I am uh, able to access an internal web interface of this controller so I can make an immediate change and see the effect. And the change I wanna do is I, I go to this button and instead of listening to feedback flag number nine, I'm gonna listen to feedback flag number one. You know, number one was the flag that made this one light up. So if I change that to feedback flag number one and I'm saving, and there we go, we should now see, yep, that this button is lighting up as the GPI trigger number one is shorted. So now imagine this, I press this button, 
the relay is flipping and I now press GPI trigger number one to light up the button. There you go, you can have your feedback cycle or your, your feedback circuit here by um, starting something and having also feedback going to that button so you have true, um, yeah, true feedback to the button. You know that things actually happened in the other end. There are so many options using the GPI box in this way, interconnecting Skahoy devices. So please send us an email if you're curious about what kind of scenarios is possible because we have a lot uh, more we can do with these features.